This is a video to help students take it in elementary astronomy lab at the University of Louisville using the software online to measure the brightness of a supernova in distant galaxies. So we have a, a website which has the content for this class and this is the page that you would see if you were a student in the class starting this exercise. We're going to look at two galaxies. One is Messier 101, and that's the one that is at the beginning of the work shown here in this single image. The way we do this is to measure how bright the supernova is compared to other stars. But you have to realize that the supernova is actually in the galaxy while these other stars are in our own galaxy. They're really, really much fainter stars, but they're nearby and stable. While well, the supernova exploded at a, and at a particular time became really bright and then has decayed since then, what we're trying to find is how bright it got at its maximum brightness. And that's how we determine the distance to the galaxy. Since we know roughly how bright that's supposed to be, and then we see in each galaxy how bright it appears to be, that tells us how far away the galaxy is. So you have two stars which are marked here, A and B, which are in our own galaxy and actually very faint compared to that one, but this one is so far away that it looks about the same as these. And the trick of this experiment, or the, the goal of it, is to measure how bright that is compared to these, or others if you prefer in the image, except that these happen to be stars we know uh, their brightness. That's the nucleus of the galaxy. That's the supernova. The other stars that you see here are in our own galaxy. In, in the galaxy itself that we're looking at, Messier 101, you can see clusters of stars in star-forming regions, but not individual stars. The ensemble light of thousands of stars mark the spiral arms that you see here. And as those stars evolve, eventually they get to the point where some of them explode in supernovae, and then suddenly we detect this very bright star, which if you were to add up all the light in that star is comparable to the light from the entire galaxy for a brief period of time. So to measure this, then we need another piece of software, and that's linked here. On that link, we'll open up a, a, a page that runs JS9, which is an active image display software that runs in your own browser and looks at this image, but lets us measure the image carefully. So click on that link, and you'll see something like this. This is the JS9 page, and it's the same page you'll see for both Messier 101 and for NGC 4790, and you're going to measure both of those. And in other um, activities in this class, you've seen this before, but um, not trying to really measure the brightness in the same way. So there are three panels here. This is the image you're looking at. This is a preview panel, which shows you which part of the whole image you're looking at. And this one is where the cursor is. Now, because right now my cursor is up here, so it doesn't work. But when I move it down to the main panel, you'll see this one change. Just watch. So there we are. There's the star, the nucleus of the galaxy, another one. But what we're looking at in this little region here is just a piece of the image that's inside this box. I can move this box around and look at different pieces of the entire image. Or I can make the box larger by zooming. So if I click zoom, and instead of zoom one, say go to zoom one quarter, then I see the entire image, both here in the preview and down here in the bottom. But if I zoom in, then I just see part of the image. And the part that I see, I can control by grabbing this little box. I'm left clicking on the box with my mouse move it around and unclick, and then that's what I see here. So let me just put it down here, and the reason I'm doing that is that these are the stars we're interested in. That's the supernova, and these are the two standard stars. To see that, we go back to the original page, and I think you can tell there's the supernova, and these are the two standard stars. This should look just like this in your browser, but it may, may differ depending on how your computer handles it. Just look for the very brightest star out near the edge of the field and for these two stars on both sides. The bright one in the middle is the one you want to measure, and the ones on each side are the reference or standard stars for that. Set the zoom at one or one half, show you more of the field here, uh, to, to see this 
close enough to be able to do it well. The other trick is what the scale is that, that you measure by. So let me, let me just point out, there's a distance scale here, which is left to right and top to bottom. That's where you are on the image. And there's a brightness scale, which is how much light is at that point. And those three numbers are up here. That's x, y, and the brightness over here. When I move the cursor around here on this roughly gray area, that number doesn't change very much. It's almost always around 18 or 1900. These numbers change because that's the location of the cursor. Left to right, the first number changes. That's x. Top to bottom, the second number changes. That's y. So that lets you keep track of where you are here in the image. And then when I put the cursor over the star, that number measures how much light is coming from the star. Now you notice in that image there are a lot of individual little pixels. So let me just zoom in on that just a bit so you can see this better. I'll zoom in by four. And I'll move this box so I just see that star. Now if you look each one of those little squares up there is how much light is in that single measurement of the star. But the star's image is spread over this whole space here. Ideally, what we do is sum up all that light. But that's not practical, and the software doesn't really let us do that, unfortunately. So the way we get around that is just measure the brightest one. If I move the cursor around, I'm looking for the very largest number I can find here. And what I'll find is a number somewhere around 22,000. 22,124, 21,493, 2,599. Look for the biggest one. You can't go really wrong here. Just find a bright pixel near the middle, and that will do fine. So 22,124 here measures how much light is at the very brightest pixel on that star. It's representative of the total amount of light from the star. It won't be exactly right, but it'll be close enough for this. Then you go over to the two reference stars. Here's the one here on the left. And you can see do the same thing there. It's about 2917. And then go over here to the other reference star and measure that one. And it's about 3306. So those are the two stars, that one, that one, and then the star that we just measured, the bright one, the supernova, are the three numbers that we need from this. To answer question number one, what is the peak signal in star A in M101? What is the signal above background for the supernova itself in the image? Now here's the trick on that, is that we do have to worry about what the background signal is. So you see there's a number just from the sky here around 1890 and a number in the star around 32 or 33. So we have to take the difference between that number and that number to measure what's actually in the star. 3086 less 1888 is going to be about 1200. So that's how much light comes from that star. And the same thing is true over here. Do that, measure here, say the way I have it right now, about 2900, over here about 1900, so roughly 1000 in that star. And then here, for the supernova, the brightest is around 2,200, 22,000, and then again about 1,900. So you take that difference, it's going to be what, um, about, about 23, close to 22,000, 22,100, something like that, right here in the star itself. So those three numbers measure how much is in the star and how much is in those two reference stars on each side. And that's what these first questions are trying to get at, how much light is in the star and how much light is in the reference stars. We're going to use star A for a reference rather than both of these. You could use either one. We know the magnitudes of both of them. But uh, A is 13.29 and B is 13.62. So A is a little brighter than B, makes it a little easier to use. You could use either one, it doesn't matter. But for the purpose of the exercise, we've had you do A here. So now the question is, what, what is the magnitude of the star that we want to measure? What is the magnitude of the supernova compared to these two standard ones? And the way we get that is to take those numbers and do a little calculation. Magnitude is a logarithm. So we need to know the ratio of the two signals, the ratio of the signal in 
the supernova to the signal in the standard star, take the log of that number, multiply it by 2.5, and subtract it from the magnitude of the standard star. Now to do this, we're going to use the web calculator because it's convenient, but you could use any calculator you want. So if I click on the web calculator, that opens up the calculator page. And now I can do a ratio of any number. So if I want to know the ratio, let's just say, for example, of 22,000 divided by, uh, as just for an example, uh, 2,000, and then divide. Now, let's do this, that. I've already got the divided by equals 11. And now we want the log of that number. And we can use the calculator here to find the log. Just click log and equals. And we have 1.04. And then we want to multiply that by 2.5. And that will be equal to 2.6. Let's go back to calculation. We got 2.6 for that number. We need to subtract that from the brightness of our star. If that were star A at 13.3, then we'd have 13.3 minus 2.6. So if you want to, we can go back to the calculator and put in 13.3 minus 2.6 equals 10.7. So 10.7 would be the magnitude of the supernova at the time this picture were taken, if those were the numbers, the correct numbers for A and for the supernova brightness. So that would be the apparent magnitude of supernova 2011 FE on the date the image was taken.